Well, this has always been one of my favorite parts. I think I enjoy milling the lumber the best. It's like a present. You crack apart the boards and you get to see the goodies inside for the first time. This is pretty rare stuff. This is mulberry. And mulberry doesn't typically get quite this large. So here's 15 there, 16 on that one. And, and this is indicative of my biggest slices. I have some more large ones, but that's really close. The reason why this mulberry got so big is it was an ornamental tree. So it was heavily pruned. And so as a result, they got extra wide. Well, they have now been seasoning long enough. They came off my drying racks and uh, I traded a slab of it for some big flat sander time and surfaced all of them. Not quite sure what to do with them yet. It's really, really neat stuff. Let me show you some close-ups. So you can see the grain. It's almost like walnut burrow in places. And this is just the way the mulberry tree grows with these little, I don't know, tits, I guess you'd call them. Little knobs coming out of it. The wood is this, I hope its color is coming across. It's kind of a golden color. We thought it was the most interesting stuff to cut simply because the sawdust was almost fluorescent green as it poured off the saw. There's a, I think a worm scar there. It matches up with a similar scar on some other pieces. And so this one is closer to the bark edge. And because it grows with these nodules, you get these pockets of bark. And what I was thinking, the bark is not firmly attached. It can be easily dug out. So I was thinking of creating jeweled pools with some glass, um, some lights behind them, maybe. Anyways, that one is uh, still thinking about it. This one here, I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. It's much more solid on the, the one side than the other. And the wood is, yeah, it's still pretty strong. It's stronger than you think. You'd think this thing would just explode apart, but it, it really doesn't seem to want to do that. These things dried, uh, we probably had maybe 10% dry loss, which is exceptional. I mean, it's, and I, I equate that to the fact that I had them stacked at the bottom of a pile, and there was probably a couple of tons of wood just holding them down. And I think that's why they dried pretty flat. So it's, it's interesting stuff. Here's a, a thicker slab. This is a, a pretty common feature we found. These would be some of those, those pockets and I guess they'd be like a loose knot in pine. So it's kind of bulged out of it. That would be the backside there. You know, I, I we make a lot of tables because I love wood and wood grain and I'm not quite sure what precisely to do with these yet. This one's got some neat almost pinkish banding. This slab here has a lot of the pink banding going down through it. A lot of the pieces ended up really thin because we only had the one log and we made the choice to cut it thinner to get more slices. Here's some examples of the big slabs. Uh, this case uh, maple crotch. Uh, this is up from the big crotch. There's there's three real big heavy slabs there. And then since I had access to that big sander, I went ahead and had two of them sanded. Had two of them sanded. I went ahead and sanded two. That one's a, a really pretty one. And because of the distress the tree was under, you can kind of see it as a dark line. Right here. There is a line about yay wide, where you've got fiddle and fiddle, and then through the middle, you've almost got good pounding. You've almost got like a bird's eye sort of figuring, something in between a full quilt and, and bird's eye. So I was thinking that that one there would become a breakfast bar. I, I like the idea of, of attempting to cut it in one continuous arc and that back edge there is pretty flat. So I'm thinking of maybe turning that into a breakfast bar and then scalvaging some supports off of those there. Anyway, it's an idea in progress. 
The other one I did, I took a bit of a risk on. This one, as you can see, I took a little bit of a, a, a risk on it. And it's not particularly large. It's a, it's a bad shape all around. It's too long and too narrow. But I love those two holes that pass all the way through it. And I love the fact that this is all outside skin of the tree. So those two pockets there. And what I'm thinking of doing is creating illuminated pools. It's kind of an idea in progress because I don't really know what to do with the rest of it. It's, it's not a good shape. We're still thinking on it. Polishing all of this, which would have a, a great lustrous tone, and then having a big oval glass top made for it. I think that could be, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Daddy. Yeah. Good job, bud. Come on. Come on, Daddy. I just figured yeah. it was worth making an attempt. I don't know if it's worth filling those two pockets with $40 worth of epoxy. Uh, I think it can be done, but it's worth making an attempt. The other thing I've been working with here is for the first time ever I'm working with a colored epoxy. I've never done it before. And when I first mixed it, it didn't want to harden properly and I was a bit nervous. But it did eventually harden up. and so. Now we're about to peel the tape for the first time and see what it might look like. This was a beautiful piece of quilted maple. I mean, considering there's no oil, there's no nothing, it's... Hey, Shay, please. Almost done. It's just sanded to, uh, to 220, if I remember correctly. That's all it is. And, but look how beautiful that quilting was. But it also had these big cracks. So, I thought, you know, there's two ways to hide a defect. Make it so you can't miss it, or make it so you can't see it. So I went with the can't miss it portion, and we'll see what comes up. So at first glance, the color experiment, it didn't look good. It, uh... The tape bowed in instead of bowing out, which is unusual because usually the pressure pushes it out. But this time it bowed in, which left me divots. So either I'll have to, I don't know, resurface this again maybe. Uh, and it also bled out. But once I did a little sanding, and I've just done a little bit of exploratory sanding here, that bleed out cleaned right up. And so this is, is leaving that crack filled with that sort of, I don't know, Seafoam green, 1950s kitchen green. And these were both filled with clear, but you can see I got a number of bubbles and various protrusions. Um, filling it from the backside, just, it just didn't work quite right on here. So this will have to be refilled from the front side, but man, oh man, look at that quilting. What a beautiful piece of work. I have no idea what to do with it. It's not very thick. This was just uh, like an offshoot piece, but it was so pretty around that knot. I'm not quite sure. I was thinking of maybe a religious theme thing, sort of a black walnut cross right here on top of the quilting, and then maybe, I like adding illumination to my project somehow, so maybe some uh, illuminating light behind it. I don't know. We're still thinking about it. I just uh, thought you guys might enjoy seeing what came off the racks this time around. And I, I don't, I don't normally sell it, but if there was something that you saw here, the the, the maples, that's a dime a dozen. The mulberries, that's that's rare. That it really is, especially mulberry this large, because you know they have to be pruned and stressed in order to force a mulberry tree to really trunk up like this, at least in North America, especially in Montana. But I'd consider selling some. I'm, uh, I'm in the market for a 
9.23 or a 9.25 A1 uh, military five-ton truck. We're thinking about starting a summer business, aren't we, buddy? He's he's thinking about starting starting back together. Uh, I think I think he's building a table there, which would make sense. But we're thinking about starting a summer touring company where we give off-road historical mining tours. And uh, anyways, I've been talking to the insurance company about converting a a 925A1 uh, five-ton truck to haul passengers, and we're really close. So I. I'd be I'd be more willing to consider selling if you were interested now, because we really we need the money to get her up and going. But uh, yeah, I don't normally sell any of it. I'll never get I'll never get another mulberry. I'll never get another one that big. But uh, you know. That's that's what came off the drying racks today. That was cut probably four years ago, uh, although it had a problem in that uh, the covering was funneling some water inside, so it dried a little extra long. And these were probably cut three years, two and a half years ago. This one's four years again. So. Can you say bye-bye? Bye. We did a long sawmill video. Okay, bud.